I'm going to show you the tools that I use for port enumeration. Now, this is going to be more applicable to the OSCP because I'm using these tools because they really strike a balance between fast and accurate, which the speed won't really affect you that much in other CTFs where you're going at your own pace. But for the OSCP, it's really a critical factor that you need to consider. So the two tools that I use is called Rust Scan and MMAP Automator. Now there are other tools out there such as Auto Recon, but I don't actually like those um, enumeration scripts because when you get the output back, you get a ton of data all at once and it just hits you all at once and you kind of just get lost in the detail sometimes and there's a danger of digging into output where you're going to get yourself stuck in a rabbit hole. So the tool that I use to start off with is running a Rust scan and then I also run an MMAP automator script in the background um, as I go through the output I get back from Rust scan. So Rust scan is an extremely fast port scanner. You can have a look at their GitHub page here and it definitely scans much faster than um, just the vanilla MMAP or MMAP Automator, which is just using MMAP. So you can install it pretty easily um, down here in the install guide, full installation guide, and you can just download this file in their releases page and then run this command on it, and it just installs on Kali straight away, so it's very easy to install. And for MMAP Automator, you just download the script and run it straight away. So that's extremely easy to install as well. Now I have pulled up a machine and booted it up and I'm just going to demonstrate scanning with the Rust scan, the MMAP automator and then a plain vanilla MMAP and just compare the results that we get back and then the speed that we get it back. So going to our terminal now, I've set up three scans here, the Rust scan, the MMAP automator, and then the plain vanilla MMAP. And I've chosen a box that has a lot of high ports. So we're going to compare how fast these scans take and the accuracy of the results and the usefulness of the information we get back. So I'm going to fire off these scans now. And then I'll put a timer on the screen. So straight away we get results back from Rust scan and we get some ports from MMAP as well. But uh, it seems like we're getting ports come through a bit faster with Rust scan at the moment. Now the port scan for MMAP Automator comes back um, for the starting port scan. These ports do not include higher ports. So you can see it stops at 3200 or so while the Rust scan is getting us the 5985 and then the 9385. And then we've got the MMAP here still churning away at the lower ports. So I am going to just perhaps pause the video for a while and then we'll come back once we get some more results. So MMAP Automator just came back with some service information here, but these are only the ports, the lower ports, up to around 3,000, as we can see in the previous scan. And now MMAP Automator is going to do a full scan. So that's all the ports. And this is going to take a while, and it's usually the longest scan when you're going through MMAP Automator. And we can see Ruskan has already returned us the higher port numbers over here. And... The plain vanilla MMAP, which is not even scanning for service at this time, it's just doing a port scan, is just up to the high port numbers. And actually we can see that uh, Ruskan has finished all the port scan already, just three minutes into the scan. So that is extremely fast. And we can see the MMAP, plain vanilla MMAP, has still got around seven minutes left in that scan. And of course the MMAP... Automator is going to take the longest, but it is going to return us the most valuable or detailed information later on. 
So this is going to be pretty useful and you're going to have uh, want to wait for this. But we can pretty much start working on the box with this information here already. For example, just uh, start enumerating HTTP with GoBuster and uh, looking at these file shares and see if you've got access to them. Um, when I get these results back from Rustscan, I usually like to do an MMAP scan with these ports just to enumerate the service numbers. And that usually runs very quickly since you're only scanning these particular ports. So basically the command I use is MMAP SC SV, the IP address, and then I go the port numbers that we get from Rust scan. So that's the command I like to use once I get the results back from Rust scan. And doing this will get our service info from these ports. And we can see that the full scan for MMAP Automator is still going. It's pretty reasonable in terms of the speed. Um, even doing a port, a full port scan, including the service versions in MMAP Automator is pretty comparable to just doing the vanilla MMAP without getting any service information. So it looks like Rust scan has completely finished with our service information on every one of these ports as well. And the scan in MMAP Automate is still going, and then the plain vanilla MMAP is still churning away, and this is not even scanning our services on these ports. So looking at this information, you can pretty much start working on the box already with what you've got. Um, I can see that MMAP Automator just returned us the full scan of these ports as well now. And it has to go through another scan for the service. So even the time that I took to manually type out these port numbers for our MMAP scan here, it's still faster using the Rust scan method I have here. Now the MMAP Automator, it sometimes does return a bit more information because it is running some other scripts in the background as well. So in the case of OACP, I would recommend just doing a Rust scan as the manual method first, and then have MMAP Automator running in the background, returning all the information. Now the thing I like about MMAP Automator is it actually puts everything into a nice folder for you. So you can click into these um, let's see, yeah, so you can click into these output in the MMAP folder and pretty much just see the information here very easily if you need to refer back to it. Now, MMAP, vanilla MMAP is still going, so I'm just going to kill it here because we know that this is just uh, very slow and it's not returning us as much information as these other tools. So this is what I recommend for the OACP due to the time crunch. So it'll be the Rust scan as your fast and quick one where you just want to get in there and start enumerating these ports straight away. And then you've got the MMAP Automator which will get you the detailed information. Now the MMAP Automator is also going to get you UDP scans as well. So I'm going to put in my password here to start the UDP scan which the Rust scan doesn't do by default. Now obviously a Rust scan is very extensible, so you can write scripts and um, pipe these ports into um, auto exploit tools or further scans. But auto exploit is obviously not allowed in the OACP and potentially uh, you can get your results nulled if you do use auto exploit. So, don't go with any auto exploit tools on Rustscan. The default works pretty fine, but you can look into piping these ports into like a SCSV MMAP scan rather than just um, this type of thing. So the UDP scan is still going. Um, this is going to be returning you all the detailed information with all the scripts that you 
could probably need during your OSCP exam. And it's very detailed as well. So you can leave this running in the background as you work on other boxes. So especially at the start of your exam, you can fire up the MMAP automator on all the boxes and they would pretty much all finish by the time you get to start working on that box. And when you do, maybe you want to run a rust scan as well, just as a double check to see if you have missed any ports. So that is it for my recommendation of port scanning and enumeration for the OSCP exam. If you are interested in topics like this, uh, please let me know uh, by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. I might make other videos of how I do enumeration, such as uh, easy ways to find public exploits on ExploitDB, GitHub, and all of that kind of stuff, and how to choose which exploit you try first as to avoid wasting your time on scripts that have a low probability of actually working. So that's it from me, and I will see you next time.